Mortar crew, 11 o'clock, 600 yards. yards, wind moderate over left shoulder, one click left, hit. During the early months of trench warfare in the 1914 to 1918 war, German forces deployed snipers using telescopic sights on rifles. They inflicted an unusually high number of casualties among officers and specialist troops. It was some time before it was realised that the higher incidence of head wounds was caused by enemy marksmen and snipers. To counter this, British, Canadian, Australian, New Zealand and South African units fitted aperture and Galilean optical sights onto rifles used by marksmen. An urgent requirement was forwarded to the War Office for telescopic sniper rifles along with specialist training and schools for snipers and observers. Over the next few years, Allied snipers gradually gained the upper hand over their German, Austrian and Turkish counterparts. British sniping rifles were set up by well-known British gun makers such as Holland & Holland, Rigby, Purdy, Gibbs, Jeffrey and the Whitehead brothers. New telescopic sights were made by Aldous brothers and the Periscopic Prism Company which resulted in a considerable number of combinations of SMLE sniper rifles and telescopic sights issued in the Great War. Some Canadians also used the Mark III Ross with the Warner and Swayze telescopic sight. One of the main problems with these rifles was in the design and construction of removable mounts. Some were overhead style, but most were fitted offset to the left. The US Winchester A4 and B5 telescopic sight is very distinctive with its long, narrow tube and micrometer adjustment rear mount. At the end of the war, the Patton 1914 rifle was fitted with the model 1918 telescope sight to become the regulation sniper issue, although by the time it was produced in sufficient quantity, the war had ended. Many SMLE rifles were used for competitive shooting with rifle clubs and they were fitted with detachable aperture rear sights. Heavy profile barrels were widely used in Australia. These are marked with an H on the top of the Knox form. Rifles that were factory fitted with the heavy barrel are stamped H on the buttstock at the wrist. This heavy barrel was also used in the Australian SMLE sniper rifle fitted with the Patton 1918 telescopic sight. Australia's Lithgow factory made an SMLE sniper rifle at the end of World War II, fitted with a heavy target barrel and locally made Patton 1918 scope, like that on the British Patton 1914T sniper rifle. This Australian rifle was designated 303 rifle number one Mark III star HT, the H indicating a heavy target barrel and the T denoted attachment of the telescopic sight. Definitely unloaded. Now you've got to fit the scope and flip the back lock back. The front claw mount, because it's a low mount, they have to dish the back the rear hand guard so we'll lift up enough to clear the, the back section. It's a matter of drop him in, flick, flick him back in place and we're ready to go. A new optical sight, the number 32, was designed for the Bren gun, but mated to the number 4 rifle early in 1940. The number 4 rifle was not yet in production when sniper rifle development occurred, so the first batch of number 4 T rifles were 1930s vintage Enfield number 4 trials models. Because of the acute shortages after Dunkirk, these were earmarked for reconditioning to be put into service. 
2000 number one Mark VI and Trials number four rifles and unfinished bodies were refurbished or built up. 1,403 number four Trials rifles were stripped and restocked at Enfield for conversion to number four T snipers with the number 32 Mark I telescopic sight. Many others were rebuilt or assembled at Fazakli into new rifles. These are often referred to as Dunkirk emergency models. The new No. 4 Mark I T sniper rifle was announced in February 1942, along with a chest No. 15, telescope case and No. 32 sight adjustment tool. Although a little on the heavy side, the sight was robust and reliable. The designation was engraved after the manufacturer's logo, service part number and telescope serial number. The No. 4 T first went into action in North Africa, but mobile warfare was not suited to sniper operation and men were not trained in its use. Renowned London gunmakers Holland & Holland took up conversion of Britain's No. 4 sniper rifles. Most were selected from Shirley production, although a few Maltby and Savage actions have been noted. Some Stephen Savage No. 4 Mark I and Mark I star rifles were fitted with the mount pads, although few were set up with the telescopic sight. From 1940, No. 4 sniping equipment was set up at Long Branch in Canada and nearly 1,000 No. 4 T equipment supplied to Canadian forces. British-made No. 4 rifles have consecutive numbers stamped on the clamping rings. The mount bracket is a steel casting secured to pads on the action body by two thumb screws. Back sights have battle apertures ground off so as not to fail the telescope when fitted. Three marks of the No. 32 sight were used on the British No. 4T sniper rifle. The No. 32 Mark I telescopic sight has a sliding brass eye shade. Its elevation and windage drums are slightly offset. The No. 32 Mark II sight looks similar, but for the eye shade. Differences are mainly internal. The No. 32 Mark III sight has a different drum arrangement, vertically in line. Ongoing improvements were bloomed lenses, a blue B painted on the tube then better sealing with a red W painted on the tube. Mark III scopes were later used for the 7.62mm L42A1 by merely recalibrating the deflection drum and reading yards as metres. The tubes were re-engraved with the new designation. Various makers' names, logos and pass numbers are evident on the number 32 sight tubes. Canada's Long Branch number 4 sniper rifle used a number 4 Mark I star action. Markings on Canadian equipment are a little different. Sites were made by Research Enterprises Limited and are marked REL. Designations are prefixed with a C as there are some differences to the British scopes. Canadian number 32 sites were marks 1, 1A, 2, 3 and 4 models. Lyman Alaskan scopes were also fitted, designated as C number 32 TP mark 1 after 100 were bought in to fill urgent orders. Griffin and how mounts were used with the Lyman Alaskan and other trial sites. Converted during World War II, this particular one stamped in the butt has S51 for the Holland and Holland conversion. These were made from rifles that were test fired and selected for their accuracy. They'll be stamped with a TR on the bottom of the receiver ring, the action ring, a T above the number four Mark I designation. On the foresight block, well, they have a screw to tighten to hold the foresight blade in place. They have a cheek piece fitted. Apart from that, everything else is identical to the standard issue rifle. The scope pads are fitted onto the rifle and staked. Threads are interesting, they're a 26 inch um, brass and or bicycle thread. The battle peep has been taken off the back sight because it would get in the way of the, the scope. They have click adjustable back sights that are sighted to 1300 yards. There's a series of um, different variations of scopes and the number 32 range. It's the most commonly encountered scope along with several other manufacturers. The scope ad adopted was originally the straight line scope for the uh, brain machine gun. The front screw screws into the actual pad that's uh, attached to the rifle. The back pad is a locating pad for the mounts and it actually screws into the action itself. 
The new Commonwealth issue FNFAL self-loading 7.62mm rifle saw some conversions of the number 4, along with the new nomenclature. A heavy barrel service target rifle was the L39A1, which was followed by a civilian version, the Envoy. Then another variant, police tactical sniper model, was called the Enforcer. The new 7.62mm NATO sniper rifle was designated the L42A1. Over 80 years after the 303 magazine Lee Metfer was introduced, the 7.62mm L42A1 sniper was approved in August 1970. It has a special heavy chrome molly barrel with four groove rifling. It weighs more than the 303 number 4T due to the heavy barrel. Set up at Enfield, most were converted number 4 Mark 1 T's, although a few number 4 Mark 1 star T's were also included. The number 32 Mark 3 telescope was modified slightly, original markings cancelled out, and the NATO code, designation, and stores part numbers inscribed. Other specialist models include the police enforcer and target variations. In April 1992, the L42-1 was declared obsolescent, but in 2005 more orders were placed after sand and fine grit fouled Accuracy International and Parker Hale M82 rifles in the Middle East. As a test control, the L42-A1 outperformed the others, so more than 100 new L42-A1 rifles were ordered with Schmidt and Bender 6x42mm scopes. Batches of 50 each for the Royal Marines and Parachute Regiment with a few more for the Special Air Service were prepared. The renowned Lee Enfield was again in frontline service nearly 120 years after it was first adopted.